the second set of the day. We're moving over to North America with Denial versus Cog. Denial versus Cog going to be an interesting game between these two. Both of them have faced similar opposition so far this season. Both lost to Enemy, both drew with TSM. And they've also both taken games off Eager as well. So mm, both these not exactly taking a game off Eager. Uh, I mean, it was close. I mean, four v five technically. If the full five there for Eager, I think it would have gone one one. You're yeah. right. So on paper, they've both pretty much ended up about where they should be. They're they're looking very similar. And cognitive gaming able to take a game off TSM recently. They're the ones on the upswing. And led by DJ Pernicus right now, this team of, of like strong on paper, execution isn't there. They're starting to make the turnaround, and now they're facing a team about the same level as them, right at the middle of the pack, in contention for that fourth seed for the LAN. Can they do it? Can they be a top team in North and America? That's the thing. I mean, DJ Pernicus was on the show the other day, and he was saying, hey, we're a new roster, just established, we're finding our feet. You look through the picks and bands they've done through those first few weeks as well, and you'll see a different sort of style trying to be adapted. These members are trying to find what works for them what is their composition about where are their strengths and who are they looking to, to I, the I mean line? I mean looking at those past two European games though I mean they need to be adapting it, real fast because be every, everything's right changing I mean Europe's always they're the ones doing the weird Europe's stuff, a crazy though. one but to be fair that was a different kettle of fish to make sense these teams should be a little bit more even denial three and five so far this split and this team well they've had their ups and downs I mean they beat the drew with TSM lost to cloud nine an enemy the the surprising one there and then defeated eager for the 2-0 but even against eager they didn't look very clean no they didn't at all like you said in that 4v5 Denial or Eager was winning. I mean, Denial was trying to force the issue. They were a man up, yet still, Eager was controlling the pace of the game for the follow for the next 10 minutes until it got to the point where everyone was level 20 and they couldn't really extend their lead any further. Denial were able to take a game two, though. Mm -hmm. A very convincing game two. And, and they're also some of the innovators in North America. They like going with these early game draft comps. And we could actually see some hell coming out. I know Mace to the Faced has been practicing it. And with the recent nerf to Weakening Curse, it could come out. We could see. I mean, we saw it from Sao last game just gone. But I mean, contested picks between these two teams, potentially a raw and Shadow Q will both look for Sylvanas and Ares. They're the, both of them have been going to that quite a lot this season so far. So don't be surprised that one being looked at by both teams. And Thor as well. Obviously, Shing and DJ Perlicus, they both love a nice bit of Thor. For me, though, the contested picks is, is that Ares, right? These are the two North American supports who run Ares. In Europe, basically everyone is using it. But in North America, these are the only two. Isis banned away against Mace to the Face, and that's also what we saw Eager do. They actually took three picks away from Mace to the Face in both draft sets. Well, Mace to the Face, the last two games he played, he picked New War and won them both against Eager. The New War play from him was on the stronger side of things. Did pick up MVP one of the in the second game for that one as well. Athena taken off a little shot at shadow Q there by cognitive so what will we see denial draft first Bologna is available a, a god both these teams play but typically we see walrus really look for the osiris That's and right. wukong Bologna is more of a, a meerkat god cognitive gaming if this was swapped right now cog would be first picking Bologna based on history on paper right now i expect to see you know in the solo lane i was gonna say Bologna versus osiris nope. or some wukong I think it would be the other way around than usual, but I think we'll still see Bologna versus Osiris. Also, so we'll I, I, I think it's likely as well. And the Bologna pick here isn't only just for Walrus. It's also to take away Meerkat's strongest god. He's played it five times out of eight yes. games, and I believe the other couple, it was either banned away or taken by the other team. And the other gods that Meerkat's played so far has been Osiris or Sun Wukong. Yeah. So <laughs> those two are going to basically go at it. Giannis picked up for the mid laner in the best. The best three games on this so far. This is his most go-to god so far, this split. Not like most of the other mages where they pick the same god four or five times. Only three and a varied amount there of others. Is. And there's the Ares. That's the Ares we were talking about. Both these supports love this god. It's going to be going over to Cognitive Gaming. Now, Kepri is still available. And it's it's interesting, you know, how much has Denial been practicing it? Like I said, they are the innovators. And if anyone's going to be bringing out something in week one in North America, I, I think it's going to be Shadow Q. Well, He's I mean, a big theory crafter, and, and he likes to get these gods and understand them. It's one of these things about how useful do the teams think he's going to be, how much practice have they got into it right now. Frey's going to be drafted alongside Bologna for the time being. Capri slipping down right now to fifth pick, potentially, as this one stands. If he gets through to the ban phase, I expect to see it banned away. You really do? 
I think so. I, I, it's, sometimes it's just not worth the risk more than anything coming out. I, I, if Cog, you know, maybe they haven't practiced against it too much. Sometimes you just take these gods away, but just not going to like go that's going to be it. No. Yeah. Sylvanas going to be locked in for support. That's going to Shadow Q. Who knows? You could you could run Capri Solo. Well, I mean, Shadow it's probably not that good. Shadow but. Q's played Sylvanas five times so far this season. Aurora's played Ares three times. They're both competent. Uh, both Neath going to be picked up. So Neath Ares. Decent amount of wave clear, same as Sylvanas and Freyling. That's a pretty much even matchup in terms of wave clear potential. Kill potential, it's a bit, with, bit backwards and forwards there. I, I, I'd give the kill potential to Neath Ares early on, especially the, if they can lock down Freya or Sylvanas. Two Our gods that have chains. no movement abilities. I mean, if they get hit by a chain and there's not many minions to really turn on Ares, they could very likely experience a At first At the same blood. time, though, a Freya Sylvanas combo can put a lot of AoE it, I think, out very I think a lot of it's going to be can Freya and Sylvanas get the early lane pressure? Thanatos ban again. We saw this over in EU as well, I believe. And there's a Sun Wukong shot aiming at that solo lane mid. Cat. So there's only really Osiris left on it the table. It seems like they're baiting them into Osiris. Or, or they would rather face the Osiris than Why would you be upset by Thanatos? an Osiris when you're going to be come. up against um, a Bologna? A Sylvanas, you're going to be able to reduce his healing by 100%. Or on the target that you hit with that, your healing's reduced by 100%. It's not a terrible pick if he does choose to go for Osiris. It might be a lane matchup that just Walrus favors taking that Bologna against an Osiris. But it that doesn't necessarily mean it will be Osiris. That's just going based off history. Ratatoskr locked in. More than likely going to DJ Pernicus in that jungle role. Yeah, Pernicus, honestly, he's gone so far. Sir Ket, Thor with his top two go-tos. Down the list, he has played some Ratatoska so far this season. So he looks like he's going to go back to that. He likes the mobile gods more than anything else. He likes to be able to nip in fights, cause an argument with a team, and then get out again if he can. And, and mobility is really the key for me that you said there. They have the Honest, they have the Neath, two glo full globals, and then Ratatoska with a very quick semi-global, able to transport yourself basically from mid lane to a side lane almost instantly. This is this for me on paper right now. I don't think we're going to see anything crazy come out of these teams right now. This just looks like... This, this isn't Europe. Europe does all the crazy stuff. I think we just mess with the meta quicker. That's why we're like, oh, That's my true. God, the meta just came Oh, look at the changes. Oh, this must be really OP now. Let's pick Mail of Renewal. I Let's mean, go Blue Storm I mean, Pendant. Let's it go, took, you know. It took North America losing two games in, in the SWC finals to realize that Ares is probably so okay. <laughs> Ares have been released. Yeah, I remember uh, Hunbets and Nuwa, the final two picks for Denial Esports. So it will be Mace to the Face on that new wall, which basically if Isis and Giannis are taken away from him, this is his go-to god. Where other teams prioritize it, it's kind of just the third pick in the line. And the biggest thing for me here is this is the first sign of North America looking at the patch notes. Guan Yu, the rise of him is quite potential now, quite potent. He was already played on and off last split as well. We did see some of that come out from Cyclone Spin at times. I believe Devios also picked up once or twice. But he's going to be played a little bit more often now. Cavalry Charge did get a cooldown reduction change to it, as well as his conviction, uh, so the passive, yes. which, which now actually stacks based on dealing damage as well as receiving. Which is incredible, right? He has the Talu Assault, so he's hitting dots, stacking it up. He's almost always going to have his passive stacked and up to max. Key, blue Stone Pendant applies a dot. The dot will then increase his healing based off his passive, ticking up damage. Oh That's why you God. see him start with this one at the start of the game. Yep. Taking a look here at the starts. Denial, typically the aggressive team, but... Right now, they don't exactly have the strongest level one. Probably not something they want to look at. Now, uh, this... bomb starting blue stone pendant as well on Neath. Yes. And this is something we actually haven't seen too much, right? So, let's highlight over blue stone pendant for us. Please, add and just let, show people at home what's going on. 20 physical power, 100 martyr. There's no health on this item at all. But the passive enemies hit by your damaging abilities take an additional 30 physical damage over two seconds. Max, two stacks. So that means you can basically hit them with two skills. So, for example... As a Neef, you can hit him with the Root, the Spirit Arrow, followed by the Unravel, and deal 60 physical damage over two seconds. So the big thing on why this is going to work for Neef, and maybe not some other Hunters, is the other option typically is Death's Toll. And what that does is, per hit, you're gaining health back. Neef has a heal in her kit. She doesn't really need that. Additionally, typically she's using one to two abilities to clear the wave early on until she can rank her Spirit Arrow up until it's high enough. This means that Neef is going to be able to finish off this wave very quickly and she has an Ares with her so a god that doesn't really have the best push the best push power the one thing is where's the build going to transition to after this because he's going boots at the start will we see the soul reaver come out i'm not so sure sorry soul eater come out after that i'm not so sure about that one both junglers though going to be rotating to mid harpies dj pinnick is a little bit further ahead here they're going to look for the left hand ones here 
and we may see a fight over these. Nope. No, I think I, both of them wanted to oh, just do see? their own. No, no. Yeah. Pernicus noticed that they wanted to fight and said, no, 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 come to the right because they're going lefts. Yep. That's what happened. The Pernicus spotted it and told him, let's go the other way. I think that's a wise call too because honestly, Giannis and Ratatoska at level 2 not going to be as viable. And if a lucky crit comes out from Shink, you don't want to deal with that. So winners right now just trying to clear the wave. Meerkat getting Don't bullied die. pretty hard, and he's not going to die from this, but he's going to get real low. He's going to have to be backing and picking up teleport. I think he'll stay quickly. here. He's got multiple on the left hand side. Neef's in a lot of trouble there, surviving with the barest amount of HP. The wisps were ticking, but so was a health potion that kept him alive in that lane. Kabom's going to be very careful here, especially when both the Denial duo lanes are on full health. And and early lane pressure is really the important thing for these. Uh, two lane comps that have really high kill potential. And you can already see Denial, they're not playing any games. They're going to be I, zoning Kabom out from XP early on. I mean, personally, I don't feel Denial have kill potential in that lane unless there's a misplay that happens overall. Sylvanas and, you know, Sylvanas Freya together, they have decent push power. But when it comes to kill, they can root, they can banish, and they can slow. That's about it, really. There's not much more follow-up to that. It's just pure pulse damage that you're looking for. It'll be more of a misplay, at least until the ultimate's come out. Then it'll change. And now that Neath likely has backflip, I think that I, I think the thing where she got real low there was that she didn't have backflip available at level two. She ended up going her heal and her spirit arrow. With backflip up, it, it's even less likely. Across the map here, Shing just trying to farm up, and Meerkat is continuing to get bullied by Walrus in this lane. This Guan Yu is not having the best of time against the Bologna. Well, it's also realizing the Bluestone doesn't have any health on it. I mentioned it when we showed it on the screen, because health, you do start with 100 base when you pick up something like Death's Toll. Sorry, 90 uh, base when you pick up Death's Toll. Or if you go Vanguard, you get 150. It's a bit of a differential when you're losing 100 HP at the start of the game. You don't realize it until they swing on your face. Walrus is continuing to put the poke on Meerkat, but now that Meerkat has his Talu Assault leveled up, he's going to put a little bit more pressure onto this map and the, or onto this lane. And the big thing for me in this matchup is Meerkat, once he gets lane pressure, he's going to be fine. He's going to control it because he does have his heal able to keep his minions alive and himself. And you can see it here. Now that he can almost full clear wave with this combo and then heal up, he should be fine. Oh, no, but the all-in coming out as well from Meerkat. There's so many archers, though. Conviction I mean, Meerkat will save the day. Can he actually find this? Oh, if he realized he could have gone in and found it. I, I, he didn't He didn't think the damage would have been enough, and he, uh, Walrus and actually could have turned that around. Walrus could have turned it around. He had enough mana. It would have been a very close fight, and just a fight that Meerkat doesn't want to take right now. It was a little bit risky. We did see the teleport actually get picked up by Meerkat immediately. He came straight back to lane, and he's already pushing it in again, trying to deny a little bit of experience to Walrus, who did not choose to go for the teleport. He went for the full Warrior Tabby. Seeing an early rotate with Walrus being forced out. Just going to soak up some experience for now and and start to rotate to his buffs. Mid camps are spawning again. Cognitive Gaming, they're in position for the right ones. No one's in position on Denial. No one's even close to grab either. And you can actually see the, the dual land from Cog. They're going to be rotating over and snagging these. So that's small helped, wins for Cog. That's helped Meerkat out quite a lot in this lane, honestly, as well. Because technically he was getting bullied earlier on. But picking up mid harpies, coming back to the farm and getting the teleport, allowed him to get a wave of experience over Walrus. Still got his blue buff up. And you can see the gold differential between the two is very, very even but it's a slight lead at the moment for Meerkat if he does get that blue. DJ Pernicus, he's pressuring this attack speed, but I think he wants to look for a gank more than anything. They're looking to bait the rotate out of New Wall. You can tell DJ Pernicus doesn't want to commit to the attack speed, and he was actually looking for New Wall to rotate over, but Mace to the Face thinks better of it, and uh, Denial are willingly giving up this attack speed. Yeah. They just don't want to fight in the jungle with a roar level 5. They don't have the beads online that they need. It's not worth the risk. And you channel yourself into corridors against Ratatoska, you're going to have problems when he hits those acorns and dashes through you. You're going to channel all that damage through you and anybody else behind you, especially if he decides to continue dashing. So five minutes in, we do see a rotation in mid, though, from Shing. Might be looking for a through space. Sorry, free no evil if he can. Onto DJ, but DJ going aggressive instead. So I also love this. You can see the speed buff around Shing while his speed buff is still remaining. While DJ is putting pressure pressure onto that dual lane, his speed buff had just spawned. And that was the call from Denial. They knew all four of those members were grouped up in their jungle. Just go and counter jungle in the meantime. They lost a buff, but they gained a buff. It was an even trade out. Speed buff for attack speed is not a big issue, the attack speed at the moment. Take into account the attack speed respawns every three minutes as well now. And the speed buff still at five. Cavalry charges out, looking for Walrus. There's a rotation from Shin coming here. I don't know what Mika was doing here. He might be in trouble. 
I think he was just trying to get some lane pressure more than anything. Because he's getting bullied out, he doesn't have his teleport online for 110 more seconds. He just wanted to gain lane control to allow him to farm up a little bit more because he really wasn't going to get a kill. There was no chance for him to get a kill there. Not for the time being. And now you can see he's also going to be able to get his blue buff as well. Uh, he did rotate there as well to support. Freezing going on in the dual lane, which is very, very smart from Denial, realizing that there's no support over here for Kabom. And this has happened twice now. And Kabom's, got, Kabom's doing the right thing, though. He can't go more aggressive here. There's a big fight over in the right-hand side. Maybe they can make it work on Warus, though, who doesn't have beads. And he's he's gone. He's down. Yeah, the Neathold's going to come through there. And Meerkat's going to secure that. Delay or late first blood, but it does go the way of Cognitive Gaming. All that pressure that they just put on Jewel in there for trying to deny farm. Kabom went even because he got the assist on that. They're going to try the Gold Fury now, but the team of Cognitive know about it. This is risky. On the backside, they're just trying to force them off it more than fight this. Yeah, Denial, they needed to do that when they saw the Neethalt heading over. Instead, they waited for the Neethalt to finish. They got the kill, and then they're like, oh, hey, we should probably go for gold. You can even see it was just too slow. By that time, the best had already rotated and DJ had already rotated back into that Gold Fury side. And now, at the moment, Cognitive got a small lead. They're going to get the chains on Shing, which is really He's important. He's going to have to beads. But like you said, beads first. Beads two, at least. So it's not beads one. It's going to be a, a little bit more than a two-minute cooldown instead of that typical three-minute cooldown we see coming out from beads one. Right now, game pretty even. I mean, the gold disparity at the moment is just down to that first blood for the time being. Nothing really too much to shout home about. Keep home, keep an eye on that bottom left-hand attack speed buff on denial side, though, because Cognitive may look to try and pick that one again and potentially set something up. I think that's why Pern may end up be floating around here, because he should know that's respawn as they took it last time round. Pernicus going to be grabbing his own attack speed now. And, and right now, DJ just counter-warning, trying to gain map control. And, and with nothing up on the map, you can expect to see him try and rotate, but it's actually Shing rotating to the attack speed of Cognitive Gaming. He's not going to be there in time. And they do have that sentry ward there, but to spot out Aurora's rotation and nothing going to come of it. Yeah, big rotation from Denial here. You can even see in the mid lane as well. Mace of the Face going to rotate just a little bit in case he was needed for support the attack speed. No aggression from Cognitive for the time being, though. As we stand at this, they're both just looking to farm up and potentially find a pick. So the game's going to... To an extent, just continue this farm phase for quite a while. Yeah, one thing to note here in this dual lane, Bronx Bombers only level 7 compared to Kabom's 8. Denial has been the one zoning in this lane all game, yet Kabom still managing to find more experience across the map and actually has well, that's also, a 300 gold lead on It's also him. because Shadow Q as well has stayed in lane a little bit more. We've seen a raw rotate away from this lane. So a little bit of extra experience for Kabom plus the, you know, plus the solo kill. A raw mid lane going to get a double no escape. Might fall some bees. No Shing's in trouble. Going to get hit by everything. Annihilation. Fear no evil was defensively used. Too little, too late. I don't know why Shing jumped in. I think he was trying to get position to use Fear No Evil in time. It just wasn't there. Yeah. And, and it, there was just too much damage across the Well, they knew the his board. beads were on cooldown, right? So yeah, they, they, that's why they forced it. So he was like, I'm going in anyway. Let's see if I can get in position beforehand because I might not be able to get out afterwards. The full wombo there got hit by Especially with board. the chains. He, he yeah. would have he been crippled anyway. Just try and get some extra damage. Try and do that's what you true. can. Unfortunately, not going to find it, though. Shing falls down for the first time today to join his teammate Walrus, who's had a good lane so far. But now Guan Yu, honestly, is starting to... Have his wicked ways. Well, once once does, Meerkat, yeah, once once Meerkat got that slight advantage, you can already see him abusing it completely. He got first blood, which was 500 gold, but since then he's been controlling the lane and extended that by about another two to 300. And he's already building into Mystical Mail, whereas take into Walrus account. a little bit behind mystical on that. Mystical Mail, though, right? If they both build Mystical Mail, Guan Yu wins. Why? Yes. Because it's going to be ticking on damage and he's going to get his convinced. Exactly. Yeah, so he's going to cons consistently heal. Is he get a good pull in the mid lane onto Pernicus there? The Wisps are good as well. Is it enough dot damage? Well, Nuwa's in the sky. Is that enough? No. no the Squirrel will live. Nuwa does like 70. I know because I died to it yesterday. She does 83 damage at Boots 2 with her rank, I believe, 2 ultimate. After mitigation. She did some decent damage, but not enough to kill DJ, who actually still picked up back RPs here. Aurora in the mid lane, going to soak up some experience again. Cognitive, off to a decent start for the time being. Maybe they'll contest the right on Harpies here. They should know Shing does have his beads available. Denial, very smart, not wasting anything here. They're just going to support you, but they got hit by a big portal. No, the Unstable Vortex, though, it doesn't secure. Shadow Q, he's locked in place, and with a rotation from Meerkat, he's going to be the first to fall. The best finds the snipe through space and time. Secure Shadow Q's life.
Very good rotation from Mika, but he's got to try and base before they realize where he is. Walrus was looking for him, didn't choose the right option. He said he's going to go for blue buff. Is the left harp is now contested. Pernicus, technical zoning duty there with those acorns just to make sure they didn't try to aggress any further. Mika just teleported to mid tower because I think they're going to try and make a call for the gold fury here. That's definitely what they're looking for. Shing, he's going to smell it out, but Fear No Evil's down, and that's the thing. Denial, they wasted so many ults in that engagement and got nothing for it. Now they can't defend this, and Shing completely zoned, already yeah. under half. He has no ult available. He can't get in here. Bronx is going to try, though. Bronx can't really do much here. Getting zoned out. Gold Fury is going to go down a little too late. Take it to the sky with the Valkyrie. Gets good pressure onto Pernicus, but Cog Gaming come out on top. And with that, the golden experience increases. Yeah, 3,000 gold lead currently for Cog Gaming. 1,900 experience. And you can just see Walrus, he was dedicated to that right side. He actually tried to invade Cognitive's bus, but everything was down. Right now, Cog controlling everything across the board. I mean, as the game goes on, though, Denial is a very strong team fight team as well. So don't write them off just yet, even though they're down a little bit right now. 3,000 gold is a decent margin for Cognitive, but it won't break the back of Denial just yet. They've been in rough spots before on comeback. They have. And that's the thing, too. Season or, or the fall split, we're see we are seeing a lot more comeback wins. Enemy able to actually come back from, I believe, at eight or 7,000 uh, gold deficit last week. And Cognitive Gaming, I believe it, it was somewhere where they came back from a 10,000 deficit earlier on. I was believe it was actually against te Team Solo mid. Was a good situation from Kabom though has gone for that Soul Eater build after Warrior Tabby and Bluestone. So far 0-0-2 in lane. Nearly got picked at the start of the game though, but for the time being since then... Played He's made a fantastic safe. recovery. He has done a very for, good job For getting his own twice and still not only staying even with Bronx, but he was actually leading in, leading in experience a little bit because Shadow Key was so dedicated his, to that lane to try and zone. His position has been very important in that lane, but also some credit to Aurora to realize he's Haunter to get him on Line, he had to leave the lane. Sometimes you have to abandon your hunter, not necessarily to watch him die over and over again, <laughs> but to give him a chance to farm and catch up a little bit and get that solo experience. And Aroz done a good job of doing that. And now they're trying to actually lose Bologna over in the solo lane. And Aroz has been focusing mid too. Shadow Q rotating back to the lane, trying to soak up some experience. And uh, really, both teams looking for picks, but it's been Cog that uh, have been the dominant ones. And Aurora has been everywhere on the map, 0-0-3. Zero, zero, all, we've all done all three kills, and the big talking point was for us, and at least for me, before we even looked at this, was the two supports. Both play a lot of Sylvanas, both play a lot of Ares. They're two go-to gods, and who would get what? And this game, Aurora got the Ares, and so far it's working out better than Shadow Q Sylvanas. And right now, Meerkat in this lane also, level 14, but the big thing is Mystical Mail is done. He yeah. has full control of this lane. There's nothing Walrus is going to be able to do until he builds that item as well. And that's going to give Meerkat the option to roam out. And you can already see rotating in the mid camps. The mid camps were already taken, but Cog are still looking to fight here. Shadow Q going to miss the full Aurora. He might get turned on, but it's Meerkat looking at the back line. I'm actually looking to try and focus on Bronx, who has to beat away. The dot. Valkyrie, he's going to fall down. Shining, so fire shots from the sky. Doesn't do that much damage, but on the backside, Aurora does manage to get out. Wrath of Terror defensively used. Warris trying to do what he can with that Bologna, but even he is going to have to back away as the Warrior's Will comes out from Meerkat. And that's going to be a Cog one for zero. And actually, it was Bluestone pinned it after Guan Yu dash to secure that kill. Bronx went up in the air, but the dot was able to tick and successfully Did Bronx actually try him. and go up then? I thought it was just... No, he was, he was halfway up the air. Oh, because he said it shows the ultimate still on cooldown. Yeah, yeah you have to like fully get in the air. Ah, uh, I wasn't so sure about that. I was like, I saw the beads, but I didn't catch it's, it. It's like a really awkward timing. It's like, did you fully get in the air? Yes, no, no. And Mystical... Let's see the thing with Guan Yu right it, now. Oh, it could have been Mystical Mail as well. Yeah, well, the thing with Mystical Mail right now as well is that... In a team fight, he's going to be stacking that passive so quickly because he's doing that to everybody on the enemy team at the same time. Then on top of that, he's also going to use Warrior's Will. Sorry, is Tallow Assault that's going to do that? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, Mystical Mail from Bologna is going to be ticking on him. So he's pretty much going to do the 100% heal effectiveness every single time. <laughs> so what you're saying is... Guan Yu is very mystical. strong right now. Guan, Guan Yu's in a great spot right now, yeah. As He's well as healing reduction has been reduced as <laughs> I well. I know. Guan Yu is looking golden. That's why we see him back in it. Brog's going to be picking up his attack speed buff. Kabam right now just been safely farming. And, and Cog has been utilizing their Neath ult effectively this time. Um, we, we've seen them play Neath in the past, but it really they weren't able to make use out of it. So far, Kabam helping secure two kills early on, and that's really helped him a lot against this Freya matchup. As Penicus said last week, and as people have been saying, like this was a roster of Cognitive that they put together. They've taken a few weeks to start molding. They're starting to realize what their play style is as a team now. Who are the danger men? Who are they going to be the frontliners, the invaders, the guys calling the shots? And who's going to be the passive players who are, you know, there for the setup for the most part? Invading the red buff on the left-hand side, abusing where they can now at 15 minutes in. 
really got themselves in a strong position here because Dinal really on the back foot. And Gold Fury just about to spawn 30 more seconds, and that's what Cog's looking to do. They're looking to find picks and shut these players down. They want to make sure they have full ward control on the left side of the map. You can see that almost every player has bought a Sentry Ward. You can see just the corners around the Gold Fury. Shadow Q will be able to, to knock out that one, but it's still fully in control of Cog. I mean, there is a hyper carry status on the side of Denial as well here. They do have Bronx Bombers on this Freya, and the longer this game goes, the more his damage will ramp up. He's working on Demonic Grip already. Hasten Fatal is finished. Shadow Q needs to be a little bit careful there, but he did have support of Shing, who Aurora was looking for then. Ward coverage goes in favor of Denial for now. But we actually see Cog start up Gold Fury, and, and Denial, I don't oh, think they're aware of this. Shing one. smells it out. You can actually see him already rotate back, but this may be gone before they can even get in position. Shing does it. He has Blink. Gold Fury, it's under half. This. He can stop this. He may have to Blink in. Just going to force reset without even panicking. They knew he had the Fear No Evil available. Smart decision by Cog. And yeah, they tested the reinforcements. I think that would have been a little bit low, and they may have changed their mind if they didn't reset it the first time by mistake. The first pull, it got reset. If that wouldn't have reset, I think that HP would have been a little bit lower, and they may have considered staying in for that one and trying to burst him. These mid camps, though, they they have spawned, and we could see some contention. It doesn't look like Shing wants to fight, though. He's in a very defensive position, and they're just going to give those up to Cog for now. Denial, they don't want to force fights. They really want Cog to initiate on them and then use that Fear No Evil I mean, to got try and counter engage. Three big circles Shing's Fear No Evil, Ooh, Shadow Q with the Wrath of Terror as well. I mean, both those two have big circles. Then on top of that, you got the Eagles Rally as well. They're making a big play mid. Not Same up time. Here. Aurora, though, actually gets his pull off just in time in the best. It's going to be the dot by Shadow Q to secure him. Aurora going to hit his chains on Shing, and he's going to stay alive. That was perfect timing from Aurora, but unfortunately, Denial smartly locks down the best before he can get through space and time perfect off. Perfect ultimate is coming out, though, from Shadow Q and Shing. They both blinked at exactly the same moment. They counted that down, you can tell. And now they're going to look for the Gofury 2. On the back side, Walrus is here. DJ Pernicus is on, coming swinging around the back two to try and deal with that one as well as tries to zone them off. He's taking a long time to do the Gold Fury here. They're going to have to fight if they want to do something. They're looking for a pull. Denial doesn't want to commit to this. I mean, they wasted their two big team fighting ultimates. They still have uh, Eagles Rally on the side of Walrus, but it's not enough that they want to fight into this with the Cognitive Gaming basically having everything up outside of Ares all. And you can see too much of a risk. Denial playing the game pretty safe for now. They know they're down. They can't take too big of a risk. And Cognitive did the right thing. They lost a kill. They cost Denial a lot and just showed presence. There's no spamming of abilities right now. They're all looking for the chains. Not going to find it. He's going to back himself away as Meerkat was in support, and you'll see Denial be very, very safe around here. Maybe they'll cognitive feel like they can now do the Gold Fury. I mean, Denial was scared to take this fight 5v4. Now that Best is back, you can be sure Denial doesn't want to take this fight. And that right now, we actually have a blink in by GJ. He's looking to lock down Mace to the face. The Aegis is out, but Mace, he has no ult. There's nowhere for him to go through space and time coming through. That's going to eliminate Mace. Best is in trouble. They're going to get hit by the Wrath of Terror as well. The Valkyrie will actually land one shot, but he gets out as meanwhile Shadow Q falls, and now now, the bad news is, is that Warriors has to back away too, as all members of Cognitive are still alive. Shing is back though, and he may be looking for blood. Fear No Evil isn't up, and it looks like he's going to jump right on his attack speed buff as Cognitive Gaming. They're going to be starting up the Gold Fury here. Fear No Evil should be online relatively quickly. Cognitive Gaming, they're sticking to it. It looks like they want to commit. Aurora going to find a chain on Bronx. Bronx, Bronx no ult available. Nothing. He's going to be the first to fall. He will on the backside, though. You can still see that the best trying to get involved with Unstable Vortex and does find him. War as Shing leaps out with a somersault to save. But the Gold Fury is now going to go to Cognitive and they win another big fight. There's no way Shing's going to be able to contest this. And Cognitive Gaming, they've just been playing such a clean, meticulous game. They're baiting Gold Furies and they realize that at times they're not going to be able to take them and they back off. You can see Golden Hand right now, 1600 for almost every player on Cog. They're going to be getting some big boy items online here soon and sitting at a, it looks like, a 6k gold lead yes, 19 minutes just in. Just over 6,000, exactly the same in terms of experience too for this team of Cognitive game and you can see on paper we said all season long this team on paper looks very strong can they actually get themselves to work together well it's starting to click now for them and sadly for the side of denial they're really struggling this season it seems they haven't been able to find or make anything work and Cognitive Gaming has done a fantastic job. Aurora, I do want to see what item he built. I don't think he had back since he was level 9. He had 2,500 in hand as a support, and he really wasn't farming. He was sitting around Gold Fury for so long. We'll take a look at his items here in a minute. Uh, general wipe around the map, and it is going to be... Yeah, I think he fully bought uh, Heartward Amulet and already starting up Spirit Robe. Already started the Spirit Robe. Yeah, it is definitely Spirit Robe as well. I was just making sure it wasn't Hide of the Urchin, because we did see small 
cost value. Yeah, hundred gold them. less, twenty four hundred instead of twenty five. Yeah, it's, it's not a massive change, but there's always a chance that somebody might think that's now a little bit even more cost efficient to actually pick up that item. But at this stage of the game, well, you might not get all the stacks you want on that item. So he will be going for the spirit robe as well. Increases protections as time goes on. Nothing else in terms of items that are crazy. In terms of the changes, we've seen mail of renewal changed, but not really seen that in this game at least for the time being. Just blue sounds. Group up in the left hand side. Aurora and Kabam. It looks like they were trying to bait someone into counter warding. Weren't going to find it, though. And Aurora is rotated back into the mid lane. Aurora right now, level 16, 2 and 5. He's actually, he's out farming Kabam and this is by a lot. Right now with how this game's going, all they want to do, cognitive gaming, just want to keep the pressure up and wait for Denial to make a play and then counterplay it every single time now. They have the lead. They can afford to lose a kill, but then get that person back and then reinitiate with their, all their ultimates available. The moment is just all in cognitive's favor. Yeah, and, and while Aurora isn't unkillable, their denial's gonna have to commit so much to try and lock him down that Cog's gonna win any fight if Aurora can just bait out a lot of ultimates. And here's the aggression coming onto this blue buff. Shing gonna try and defend it, but he's gonna get chained in place, likely to be forced to beads. Doesn't look like Cog wanna keep that aggression yeah, up though, chain. they're gonna back off. Aurora had to hit the second chain there to really try and continue that 5 through wide to pressure him more. They do get the blue buff though, which is the big thing that they were really looking for there. The tier one tower on the right hand side is slowly getting chipped down, as is the one in mid, which I believe is really on his last legs right now. It looks like it's just a couple autos away, and you can see the best. <laughs> Zoning Shing and Shadow Q off of rotating back to this. More aggression on that right side. Looks like Aurora just wanted to make sure to pick up that blue buff, get the extra mana regen, and a little bit of cooldown reduction. Shadow Q could get caught out here. Chain's going to miss, though. Flames coming out, and Aurora realizes that he dropped that kill. We just see more pressure from Cognitive Gaming now. They just picked up 500 gold for the tier one tower in mid, for, sorry, in the solo falling. Mid is due to fall. And that's good credit to Cognitive because they're against a the new war in that mid lane. That's not an easy target to try and pressure her tower down. Generally, she's the one pressing up against your towers early on. But with, with how strong Cognitive's early game has been, there's been no way that Maze to the Face could have been pushed up. Big group up here in mid lane. We've actually seen both hunters rotate. You can see Bronx Bombers and Kabam. And DJ floating around the backside of this tier one. This is what he does do on see, almost every single guy. Do you see his build though? He went what he went Acorn into Warrior Tabby into Bowstone. Oh, the blue stone. Pandan. In the Just middle of his the build. build. In the middle of his build. It wasn't an early purchase. It was a late purchase. Then he got, went for full penetration in terms of a Titan Spain as well. And now he's rounding out with crit. Technically it's a lot of it's a very cheap build. It's, I mean, you can see he's already into one of his last items on the build. Meerkat going to get whooped in place, going to be able to heal up all the poke he took, though. And this five-man grouping from Denial, basically just to keep Cognitive Gaming at bay. Cog, they want to fight, but they don't want to force anything under tower. Denial knows this, too. And Cognitive Gaming, they're going to back universally. It looks like they want to get set up for this Gold Fury that's going to be spawning in just under a minute. I don't see any weakening curses on either side right now. Denial only have one space left in their inventory to potentially pick one up, which will help out against Guan Yu potentially. But there's not, that's the thing, if though. If they worry it, about him being a threat. It's like, it's really deceiving. Guan Yu's heals, and especially Nice's, it doesn't, they don't have a healer, right? They don't have a Hell, they don't have an Afro, they don't have a Ra, they don't have a god like a healer god, but mm -hmm. just all this side healing, Guan Yu's heal isn't a lot, but with the recent changes, Conviction is stacked fully all the time. That's going to increase his healing, and we, we're we likely to see, uh, if we can actually take a look at it, we can bring up his his healing overall, I believe with uh, F2 is Iodin. We can see how much healing he's done in team fights so far. It's It shouldn't be too much, just 3,500, but that's gonna, or no, I was looking at the wrong god, 7,000 already, and yep. there really hasn't been that many team fights. Not really, I mean, he's just doing what he needs to do for the time being. This isn't even at the team fight stage just yet. The one or two team fights we've seen, he has made an impact from more from the front line in terms of going aggressive than anything else. He's a hard target to bring down right now. And after going into Jotun's, he's now got even some more damage to add to this too, which will really help out in the fights. Taking a look, it looks like Cognitive Gaming, they're grouped up. Co Gold Theory has spawned again, and you can see them trying to find a pick. Even the best is there. It looks like he's just going to be placing a sentry, though. Shadow Q, not going to be able to counter ward that. Those wards are not close enough to see each other right now. I want to know when Cognitive is going to actually just turn up the tempo again. Maybe it's this Gold Fury for them, because for the time being, they laxed off a little bit and just let people farm up, which is giving Denial a chance to catch up a little bit in the itemization to at least fourth items. They have started the Gold Fury. Pernicus on zoning duty here, but he may get picked himself if he's not careful. He's not on zoning duty. He's on aggression duty. And, and Brog's Bomber is taking half his life in under a second one blink combo and we see that cog they had started gold fury but mace to the face of shadow q were able to knock them off of it for now but with bronze 
taking that much. You can actually see the five-man group up by Denial. Just going to heal up Bronx and try and get back into this fight. Gold Fury is already under half, and Aurora zoning four people right now. Well, he got bursted a little bit hard. He's got to be careful of the pulse damage going out from Bronx around the side. You can see the engagement from Shadow Q on the backside of the Wrath of Terror. Looking to deal damage. Cog get the Gold Fury, but the resulting fight is very, very close right now until those chains landed from Aurora. Yeah, Bronx Bombers. He's going to get eliminated by DJ Pernicus. DJ continuing into the back line. Crits are coming out, but he's not going to fall. The portal, though, Shing, he's going to fall. And that's going to be a three for zero. And Cog took career of the Gold Fury. I'm gonna get the Gold Fury. I think they're going to swing straight for the Fire Giant. I mean, they can pick up tier one if they want. Maybe look for a tier two. The heal's coming out there. Look at the Conviction. It healed DJ up from 20% HP to about 40 there. And now it looks like they are going to actually go for the Fire Giant. leave a raw zone in duty as well as bring down the tier one. That's what he's there for. And it looks like they're going to try and commit on Aurora and try and lock him down there in that mid lane. But you can just see how tanky he is. He's level 18. Yep. He's three levels above Shadow Q. He's a level behind Walrus. And he's actually beating them one versus two while Cog secures the goal or Fire Giant. Denial are in a rough spot right now. I mean, they've only just lost two towers, but look at the goal. The goal difference is 11,700. Now, generally, when we see gold leads like that, what that comes down to is towers being taken as well, tier twos especially, but they're all still standing. Only two towers down. That's a 1,000 golden towers. That's it, off a 12,000 gold lead. And you look at the kills, right? One to 11, it's a big disparity, but the 11 kills, it hasn't been like Cog completely wipes Denial and then gets a Gold Fury and a couple towers. It's just been a couple picks here or there, take two for zero in team fights. It's, it's been a steady increase. It hasn't been massive rises. Not be massive rises. Golden Bow finished for DJ Pernicus the last time. That's going to work very well with his Acorn. So, tell me how inside. that works out. We can highlight the, the Acorn real quick, Zayden. So Opal Acorn, basically, when you dash, it's going to be applying on-hit effects as well, which is why it works very well with, you know, Frostbound Hammer and, and, and Execution or anything, any on-hit effect. Golden Bow going to be proccing between multiple players and just doing maybe not burst damage, but it's going to be doing a lot of AoE damage in the major But if they're fights. all stood on top of each other as well, they're getting yes. hit multiple times. Ooh, that could be quite painful. So, DJ Pernicus, we got some different builds, and you can see him blinking in, looking for aggression onto Shink, who's going to instantly blink in response there. He did just sell off his Bumba's Mask for some extra crit to DJ Pernicus as well. Look, Still look at how cheap his build is. Holding up Bluestone. I mean, his items are all 2400, you know, and down. The, or Titan's Bane, right? Titan's Bane is the most expensive item in his build. That's not something you see too often. Now for the time being, you can see Cognitive trying to actually bay out in the purple buff area. They do have wards around in the jungle there as well, so they can see the rotations coming in from Denial. Hopefully Shadow Q doesn't panic too much and go looking to find out what's going on in the jungle because the Gulf is down, they should know it is. And the rotation is definitely for Cognitive to look for the tier two left as Guan split push right. And, and that's the thing, right now, Cognitive Gaming, they're splitting the map. They're aggressing onto three locations. It looks like we will have a fight in left lane, though. Shadow Q, the route going to keep Cog at bay for now. Well, as well as that, we saw Mekai just teleport in for the left-hand tower. The left-hand tower is already very weakened, easily tankable for Guan Yu or even Ares here. But in response, we do see Warus rotate all the way over. He did save his teleport to get here, though, which is a little bit of an advantage for Denial, at least, as Pernicus. Well, he's going to go and pressure mid instead as the tower in tier two does fall for free. And Cog right now are playing such a respectable game. They're not trying to force the issue too much. They know that Denial does have incredible team fighting potential. And also, if Bronx can get rolling in a team fight, if he can lock down one or two players early on, it could spell disaster for Cog. So they're giving a lot of credit to Denial's team comp, especially that Fear No Evil and Eagles Rally. Something you really don't want to fight into under towers. So they're splitting the map, forcing Denial to separate. And when they do group up, they just leave that lane and pressure something else. So you can see a tier two tower uncontested for them. Well, minute and a half left to the Fire Giant respawns, which means these buffs will be running out on the Cognitive Boys at the moment. They won't be too upset about that, though, because they will have some shopping Boris. to do after all that gold they've got picked up from taking down these towers. 30 minutes in and still only 12 kills, but it's not like we haven't had action. There's, it's just been slow and steady wins the race for COG right now. They found the picks they needed. They found the gold and objectives they needed. They're going to take all the towers across the map, extending their gold lead, and there's there's no way they're going to pressure into this Phoenix, right? Fire Giant, it's, it's going to be falling off in 20 seconds. They're going to take the Gold Fury. They're going to spend probably the massive amounts of gold they have in hand. 
buy up their last remaining items and enforce the issue. And like you said, they're using the mobility to be able to split push the map down as well. Pernicus obviously has that big global ultimate, well, semi global, but he's always going to go over to the other lane, steal away the jungle, escape if required, but still to the what, team. With what Pern is doing, I think, is, is probably the most important, right? It's easy to push up lanes with multiple people and split the map. But what Pern is doing is he's lurking in the jungle. And what's going to happen is Denial, as they rotate between the lanes, as they were rotating, trying to defend each objective, he would pressure them. And it's so scary, especially if you're Shinger Bronx Bombers, walking even into your own jungle because you don't have vision because Cog's controlling it. And you know DJ can almost one-shot you at this point. Talk about one-shot. He just finished off Deathbringer as well. Finally saw that Bluestone pen that he picked up after the boots and he's working on more crit there as well cognitive gonna take a free goal fury by the looks of it before the fire giant spawns denial though they're gonna get to this opportunity to try and ward up i guess at the fire giant and prep themselves for the next defense of that because to be honest if they lose that one it's gonna be a slow methodical death for the rest of the game i feel yeah and, it, and you could see denial They've been doing a good job of not taking these fights, but at one point, you almost have to just pull the trigger because they haven't taken a fight for so long. The gold lead slowly extended from 7,000 to what looks like 18,000 very quickly. I mean, you can see on the side of Denial as well, they're trying to do the best they can with what they've got. They've sold off a lot of their star items just to finish their fourth items ready for this next fight. This next fight, very important to them. Cognitive, well, most of them are starting to approach sixth item right about now as well. The level disparity is not really a thing actually anymore. There's still two level 19s though on Denial. Shing and Bronx still waiting on 20. You can see, like you said, the items coming through. Deathbringer has been finished for Kabob. That's the big one I'm looking at. If he finds a crit, especially on Shinger or Bronx Bombers, who, who still aren't level 20, they're going to get hit real hard yeah, in Denial given, once again. To give up the fight, you can see Shadow Q's over in the left-hand lane here farming out the, the minions there. So they, they have to take a fight on this first. They cannot give up a Phoenix. And Cognitive Gaming, they're going to do the exact same thing they've been doing. Unless someone gets out of position, they're likely to split the map Ooh. here. And there's DJ looking for a pick. Not going to happen. I, if I'm COG, there's no reason for me not to split the map like I've been doing successfully before. But at the same time, they are so big, they, they could, could force the fight. Phoenix fight. They could do quite easily. They do have makeup for the front side as well, as well as a raw to tank up that Phoenix if they want to go aggressive here. But maybe this is what Denial's wanting. They're going to try and force them to fight under the Phoenix and maybe turn it around with their big AOE ultimates. Eventually, though, something's going to have to give because at the moment, everyone's just standing off. I mean, I mean, each other in mid. Cog has the time. They just got Fire Giant. They had backs less than a minute and a half before. They, they're likely to not have an extraordinary amount of gold in the hand, and that's what they're doing. DJ Pernicus sp splits up right lane, and now Denial. They're going to be forced to defend two lanes. This is the fight that Cog wants. Cog wants DJ to have a one-on-one -on -one with Bronx, I think. And Pernicus as well, though. I mean, he's got the blink available, but change from the will come out. They do land onto... Mace in the mid lane, gonna force him back a little bit, and then onto Warus. Blinking initiation for the fiddle even from Shink, but he took a lot more poke than he wanted to on the backside there. We're gonna see the best actually pick up the kill onto Shing as a good initiation comes out from Mirka. So for Warus, but it's not enough, and he's gonna get bursted down as well. The protection coming from the Wisp, not gonna be enough as the best finds the snipe through the wall. Best getting poked out, but it doesn't matter. Bronx, he can't lock down his target, and Meerkat's just dashing through people in the middle of the Phoenix. Two are dead on the side of Denial, and the map split up. It worked for a little bit. Denial finally tried to force the issue, but it's looking like it's too late. Aurora going to blink over the wall. Lockdown Just mace to the face. Back. Two Phoenixes down. Two Phoenixes down. 34 minutes in the game. The Titan under threat. There's no fire minions here just yet, but I don't think they'll really care about that right now. I think they're tanky enough to just to deal with this anyway. The Denial boys, there's nothing they can really do to stand this. Pernick is going to dash in the backside, doing some great damage to Bronx who trades back. Pernick may fall here. The Titan is getting very low, and it will drop, as does a couple of members of COG. Double kill for Bronx in the end. Denial able to find four kills, but outside of them defending their Titan, only one kill that entire game. Cognitive Gaming played a very meticulous game, and you could see both teams giving each other respect, but Denial gave Cog too much respect. That sometime you have to pull the trigger and full commit. They didn't do it, and they allowed Cog to just slowly increase their lead to where they really couldn't fight into it. The one it. time we saw a full commit was when they both played Shadow Q and Shing in the mid lane and yes. found that pick with the double ultimate combo onto Giannis. That was a good play from them. Since then, since that, they didn't manage to get any synergy on that team at all during that game. And slowly, Cognitive just slowly just continued building this lead. They, they, it really seemed like they were very scared after the second Gold Fury. 
because you could see, they wanted to fight that second gold fury. Mm -hmm. They failed. They lost fury, and they also lost three kills. And then since then, they were just like, we're not fighting. I'm but but they just didn't fight for the 25 remaining minutes of the match, and I mean, it just slowly the, the got The two sides really saw them engage. We saw them engage three times. I saw Shadow Q blinking, trying to steal the gold fury, yep. and snap something up, or reset the gold fury at least. And then we also saw the end, Shing at the Phoenix. And then the gank. And then the gank in the mid lane where they got their first kill. Meerkat, though, will get credit for player of the game for that one. Let's be honest, Guan Yu, he's something to recognize this season. Yeah, and he was even able to secure, you know, first blood here. That was important because at the start, Walrus was controlling this lane, but after that kill came through, there was no stopping Meerkat. No, all the way through. I mean, Mystical Mail online as well, so he's very tanky on the front side. Had a very difficult time trying to deal with him. Everything on the enemy team kind of just helped him to sustain even further and also sustain his teammates too. I don't know what his healing was at the end, but... The Guan Yu heal is very deceptive. You need we we honestly needed to see anti-healing come out from it. And even Meerkat actually picked up Brawler's beat stick at the end of the match as one of his final items. So even even he was respecting the small amounts of healing coming out from Shadow Q and Bronx Bombers uh, Freya having self heals. Maybe they didn't expect to Meerkat to be as effective as he was in that game. They did help him out for the most part though over in that duo lane because we sorry in the solo lane because we see all the big ultimate for the first blood where the big team combined of Cargo. Yeah, not many, not many kills across the board, but we do have the Alpha Draft top performers. Probably not the best fantasy points. You can see Meerkat sitting at the top uh, just below 30, along with the rest of the squad just below 30. Kabam, though, really just kind of sat in his lane and farmed for the Kabam most part. Kabam did what he needed to do, and this is what, Cog like I said, Cognitive yeah. are just trying to find what their jobs are going to be in the team. Kabam, for me, I think he's there to play passively in lane, maybe assist the teammates as the fights go on. But for the most part, is when he gets to team fights late game, that's when we'll maybe see him come out, like as a traditional hunter.